is for 228 Allen. I just don't have the app or the, the application. That's all. All right. I've got a paper version if it comes down to it. That's the post. Yes. 228 elements post. I have post. Okay. I made the uh, physical copy. Okay. As we now call it. Um, <laughs> can John get back to you about the candidate? Paul regrets. Then just check the audio is coming from the account. Uh, I don't know what's up with the range. Right. Do you want to talk to you about the candidate, uh, the architect, architect candidate? Uh, yeah, I, I need you guys to uh, indicate that you interviewed the person and uh, do we want to just be adjourned and just talk about it separate at the end of it? We we can, I just going to put it at the end of the meeting. There'll be nobody here pretty much. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be an adjournment. I'll ask, I'll ask um, Victoria. I'm just going to bring uh, but, but, uh, yeah. we, we need to uh, we need to vote on that and then I'll send, assuming everything's positive, I'll send the uh. The applicant and her uh, her resume to uh, Michael and to uh, Mayor Johnson. I think we really like. And that they will then smoke cigars and drink. I smoke. I would. I smoke. Michael, <laughs> what? You're in city government. <laughs> I'm a singer. <laughs> you're, you're supposed to be the deal guy. Something's too hot to handle. Without cigars. Yeah. Without filling my lungs. All right. Oh. <laughs> 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 double authentication means you can't get your HPC on your phone. Really? really? You can't hook it up to your emails. Oh. I want my uh, my uh, buried emails back. I promise that was coming. I can get to them, but they're not. They don't work well. And I've got attachments I want to them. Get this over slowly. Take your time. Again, we, we don't even have corn yet. Okay. Here we go. Well, so, um, person who helps support the dark hair. It's We're back at board. We're back at recently, and I was just like, he's on uh, another committee or commission, I think, has it. She was DJing at Little Dad's the other night. Boy, really? Yeah. If you bartend, is that a tie? Uh, yeah. It, oh, she, she's a hoot in the hall. Yeah, she, she's everywhere. Every, I have seen, I, I kind of, Hi. she's a guy yeah. like eight gigs going. Her mom is a cookie maker. Yeah. But she's a rat. Oh, yeah. Bill, we're way ahead of Are we good? Four more minutes. Yeah. Oh, we rock. I need uh, Chip and uh, I need Chip. Does Chip know where we are? Uh, I hope I texted everybody the address. It was published in Gossips. It was posted on the city. Uh, but I sent uh, HPC text out. <laughs> So I hope so. Are they 18? That's the reason. 88 compliance. Well, they this is our new location? For three months. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, the, the city hall building wasn't um, accessible. Uh, and they were going to get in actual trouble on that. So I think that what's happening this week is they're uh, taking out uh, working files 
uh, and stuff that the, the city hall folks need to work with on a regular basis. And then uh, they'll start uh, the uh, construction work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hey, Victoria. Hey. Can I sit up there? Is there room? Yeah. Anything you want. I spend Does a lot of time in this room or the other room uh, for the assessment review. An interesting committee or commission. Oh, okay. I just did your camera. Victoria, <laughs> thanks so much for coming through with those notices of appreciation and for the board support. Yeah, yeah. We like to do, right? Give everyone the good feeling. No, no, no. It's great. That's very useful. <laughs> it, it helps people go uh, forward. So uh, it does, yeah. Michael told me that, and you'd be interested in oh, as, a, as a city attorney, Victoria, that he refuses to smoke cigars, sit in the back room, and cut deals. Which I thought was the appropriate role. Isn't it very <laughs> difficult? <laughs> yeah. I thought that's like what I'd be doing all day, right? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. You're very welcome. Yeah. All right. Um, do you know, you know what I didn't know? Oh, it's easy. Thank you. <laughs> Should be a Oh, yeah. It's in here. Yeah. Oh, I'm on. Yeah. Great. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank you. Paul Barrett sends regrets. John Schobel will be on well, probably a uh, video. No, but I need four. I need four in the room. Oh, That's the, the issue. Oh, boy. And I don't got that part. And you know, technically under our Paul Craig case. What's his name? No, quite. <laughs> this is uh, uh uh, 225 hours. Just so we're uh, under this law. Yeah, you got to check it out. Now you got You're supposed to be giving approval in advance for people to attend virtually. I did. Okay. Okay. Where you want? I did. Over here. The the uh John John gave notification Wait, quite early. Oh, we've been I did it all had it. Oh, that yeah. you contaminated? No, we're, yeah. we're negative, but my daughter was oh. came back to me for sure with the so it's, uh, the nicest gift of all. <laughs> I'll sit over here back. You don't sound well. like pleased parents. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not feeling that. We know that Phil is, is clean. Mm -hmm. I have the damn thing. I think twice. <laughs> and it was unhelpful. Perfect. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. Thank you, Hugh. FYI. <laughs> After NY. It is call to order. It's 10 a.m. It's time for Historic Preservation Commission regular meeting. Uh, the commission will review the draft minutes from uh, February 10th, 2023, which Jan sent out in a very timely way. And thank you. Thanks, Jan. Mm -hmm. All right, solemn pause. Oh, <laughs> A uh, motion to refer on the question. And a second, please. Sorry. In favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you again, Jim. Uh, C of A votes. Victoria, will you be able to share some of this? Um, I'm struggling. I can, but I emailed them, so yeah. I can't. No, no, no. I know, I know that. So I was just thinking of the folks at home. First up will be a vote for uh, 10 South 7th mm -hmm. Street, which mm -hmm. if everyone remembers was a group. I think I need to give them a kind of okay. I have to join my motion to uh, uh, if we have the CBA, it would be great to look at. I know that Victoria yeah. sent everything up uh, yeah. yesterday, so the commission had an opportunity to review. Uh, if there, if there's, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's just the metal roof. The metal roof. Okay. Uh, if there are no questions or concerns, a motion to approve the CVA is for six years. A couple things wow. about his mom, who his late mother, what she'd be thinking right now that he reached this point where he's nominated for an Oscar. Okay. Please mute. 
Uh, Madam motion to approve this evening. Thank you, Jeremy. And a second, Hugh. I second. Oh. Approved. Next. Paul, you're on. Yes, I'm here. Thanks, Paul. And John Shovel, you're on. Dennis. <laughs> That's a nice way to describe it. <laughs> I have a motion to approve the city as prepared by the city attorney, Jeremy and Hugh. In favor? Aye. 705, Cherry Alley. Restoration and renovation. Repurposing of the barn doors that face the alley uh, to the side by side. And it was, this was approved with the transition. Uh, in part, but, oh, you know, this, I, we can edit. I was not able to hear. Oh, yeah. So, discussion. if everyone remembers, there was a, the, the barn doors that we, that Miranda, maybe she's, she really meant something. Chip also liked the barn doors. So, and their idea was to keep them on the outside, but planking mm -hmm. the, the new entrance way. And then the other step was really for safety. Those in the back. I, I don't remember what balcony. the conditions were. The condition was we wanted those doors. Uh, okay. So definitely keep the doors. Re, re, refashion them. They're sliding doors. Oh, they're rolling. Okay. Two, two okay, so we, that was the only case that's in place. If you type on that word document, um, is where it says it's hereby approved, you delete the period. Okay, is this a word? Yes. Yeah, okay. And say with the following condition, uh, it's hereby approved. Where are you? In, I don't know. Check it out. You check it out. Oh, okay. Um, is it the oh, is hereby approved yes. with the following condition? And then you would say one, um, that the barn doors be repurposed and affixed to the to the building. Exterior to, to the, the exterior yeah. of the building. And then if there was a second condition, um, alley facing barn doors be kept and be uh, affixed to the side. affixed to the exterior of the building. And in working condition. Yes. Okay. And was there a second condition? No. No. Okay. So then it would be the to adopt the CBA with that condition. Okay. So let me put it back. So here's where we've added it. So okay. So we. We approved last week and now we just have to vote. We just vote on the C of A. So a uh, motion to vote on the C of A is prepared by the city attorney with the condition to describe. Jeremy and Hugh in favor. Aye. Are there any approved? Uh, we have two sort of mem mem memorandum of approval. Miranda. No problem. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Watch your stuff on this uh, wire. Okay. So this is 402 memorandum. Okay. And this is similar to what we did um, when we first reviewed the depot district, which was another yes. big project when we we're talking about the massing and the size. So no, these are these are these are useful. Uh, and the applicant has asked for a memorandum of support. It's it's not binding in terms of anything that we reviewed or agree with, but the overall we do support the project. Mm -hmm. Jen, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little slider with a little ball yes. in the middle. Can you just make it a little bigger? That, that's great. So this is, I guess, is the salient information. The applicant must return to HPC first at C of A. Appropriateness for one more detailed plans are available for review. 
Right. Right. I, I, I like that it just says that we take no objection, right? Mm -hmm. No. Thanks very much for that, Victoria. Oh, um, do not object to the project concept. I think that's good wording. Uh, any other comments? Or as a mo motion to approve the uh, uh, memorandum in support for 402 uh, Warren Street, otherwise known as the Hudson Public. Jeremy and you, all in favor? Are there any? And what were the votes at there? <laughs> uh, Paul. Paul? Yes. You voted aye? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I keep on forgetting the screen. Uh, another uh, similar, but this, this will be uh, an actual letter from uh, the commission uh, in support of uh, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly. I'll try to concede it. It's at a Hudson. So, yeah. Uh, can we see that? I don't think I have that. That's uh, six, oh, wait, yes, I six do. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, this was drafted as a letter to the planning board just telling them that you are, you've started reviewing it. Correct. Yeah. Again, could you make it a little bit? Sure. Thank you. Sorry. Got it. <laughs> done, done. Would you like that red or, or are we just entering? I, I think we're fine. Okay. And um, unless anyone on the commission has an objection or, or yeah. Craig has an objection, we should uh, vote on it. Seems good. Okay. Good. Motion to approve the letter. Approved. Jeremy, you all in favor? Aye. Aye. We're not opposed. That letter will go out uh, tonight or tomorrow. Do you know when they're seeing planning? Planning wanted them to wait until they received a use variance. I see. I All don't right. know. None of our business, really. I'm just curious. They, okay. they didn't. There was a. Yeah. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. Okay. <clears throat> Did uh, you say they were going up in, in the middle of March or something? Like that? No, that was um, for the zoning board. There's a hearing. Oh, the zoning yeah. Board. March 14th. I think. Right. Right. Super. All right. Uh, CBA applications. We have. Um, Two continuations from prior meeting uh, and uh, two new applications with uh, uh, with explanation uh, uh, 228 Allen, they're supposed to present, I believe, in the last meeting. Mm -hmm. And there was a mix up. We didn't want to hold them up on, on getting the roof done. So Craig and I talked last night uh, and, and agreed to let this come into this meeting. Uh, similarly, uh, the 118 North Fifth Street. Uh, we uh, I, I reversed them. In either case, we 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 did talk about it. Craig's reviewed the applications. I did too, and we agreed to let these guys go forward. So that's in addition. But let's go ahead with uh, I hope straight up uh, application for a, a sign at Seven Fifty Union Street. Uh, is anyone here to speak for Seven Fifty Union Street? Folks out there, anyone representing a sign at 750 Union Street? Okay. Uh, 118 North 5th Street. Who's here for 118 North 5th? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Place in architectural shingles. Do you want to keep on going? Yeah. Tell us more. <laughs> uh, they have a leak in the roof. Um, so there's three units that are connected. She's the middle. Um, yeah, as you can see in that picture there. Steve, what, what's on the roof right now? Shingles. And they are going, going, gone. Yes. What's happening? Uh, can I show you? Yeah. Go ahead. So they have this. Uh, these are the three units. This is her, well, with a little star on it. 
And they have this older, I mean, it, it looks like a aluminum ridge cap that they use to kind of separate these because these two buildings have, they were shingled at the same time. So they're all tied in. These were done at a different time. So they use this metal to separate it. I don't know what's under there because I didn't get permission from the neighbor to rip it off to see how they made that water tight. But we were trying to come up with a system to be able to do her roof separate from theirs, but also make it watertight and give them the opportunity to do their roofs separate at a later date. So we would be putting um, two by sixes where her house ends on both sides and then capping it with a coping metal and then step flashing on either side. So then when the other sides, they go to redo their roof, they have something to put their step flashing to to tie their shingles in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and what's up there now is sort of regular asphalt shingles, correct? Dark color. Yes. And you're proposing asphalt shingles, dark the color. Same. Yep. Okay. Correct. Do you have an example or do, can you talk about any specificity um, of what you're putting on? I'm not really an artist. I drew something up fairly quick for uh, Craig here. I don't know if you guys would sure. whatever you whatever you have so that we just understand what's happening. I, I don't think we Need to be and be specific as you can. Okay, yeah, so these are this is just what it's going to look like in the end. How the roofs are all separated, these two are actually connected right now. There's okay. going to be a black coping metal capping the two by sixes and step flashing to separate them. So then from here on out. They can all do their roofs separately. Nothing has to be tied in. And then if, like as of right now, these two roofs are connected. So if she wants to do her roof and they don't want to get their roof done, right. it's going to get ugly. No, I, I understand the issue. Yeah. So this is kind of like a little spec on how the two by six. That? Yep. Thank you. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I got it. Yep. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. Commissioners? Yeah, I think it's all good. Uh, a motion find the application complete. Hugh and Miranda, mm -hmm. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Paul. Uh, a motion to uh, waive a public hearing, request the city attorney to pair C of A, Jeremy and Hugh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Steve, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next steps is. Uh, uh, I, I, I reckon you might be new to the process. The next step is that city attorney Victoria will prepare uh, a certificate. We will vote on that at the next meeting, which is two weeks from today. That certificate goes to Craig, attached to the application, and as soon as he's got that, you contact him and you're good to go. Okay, should I be here in two weeks? Or no, you I'm don't there? have to be. Okay. Just go, go back to Craig. Uh, in two weeks, catch up with him, make sure everything's okay, and you're going. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Take care. Come on. Okay. Uh, while we're doing this, uh, let, can we take a look at uh, where's where's our other route? You said 228 Allen, is that a route? No. No. Okay. 118. But 118 North Fifth Street is a route. I got them reversed. <laughs> Oh wait, now that was one eighteen. That was one eighteen. Uh, so we're getting, we're moving forward. What do we got left? Two twenty eight Allen. Let's do it. Two twenty eight Allen. Uh, there's a, a a change in materials yep. on posts, uh, and the applicant will tell us about it. Okay. Um, uh, do you have a package or a I don't have I don't have those that document. Uh, uh, I've got one or two paper. Do you have any paper? Mm -hmm. I, oh, he, he submitted three. You got three plans right there in front of you. I did. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> that. And I did that. email them out. There were two separate no, emails. I, I can describe it on. Um, as you I'm guys casting no doubt on nobody. <laughs> I'm, did you email me? You know, I can show you. Okay. okay. I don't know if I I don't know my name, so did I send you? No. I sent you, 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 I sent you,
But it did send it to the court here. So, here, here, I'll again. I don't have internet. Okay. So I can uh, can, uh review what's happening. Uh, Mary Bond, our get it very nice package. Um, I know this is a separate certificate of oh, it, but it's uh one small part of a much bigger project. You guys approved us in twenty nineteen. We did. That that's good background. Yeah. This, was, this, this whole project was approved. Um, on a prior date, and the proposition in the previous approval yeah, was uh, repair restore uh, on uh, on those posts. Uh, for you will explain why that that wasn't feasible, and then you went out and looked for a, a purchasable item that was as close as you could get to the original. Yeah, and I think that's correct. So, um, with working with our contractor and with our architect. We we believe that the existing or advanced state of deterioration. The original notion was um, to retain the existing um, ones facing the street on the side. The returns those were in fact um, replaced many years ago with metal fencing. So the notion was to replicate new ones on the sides, replicate or restore the ones in the front, and then the stairs. As you may recall, it was a basically a concrete bunker which had also metal railings. So the notion was to restore, repair, replace the ones on the side with new uh, fabricated ones to match the existing, and then the new railings on the, the wood stair, the new uh, wood uh, railings on the porch step area would be um, off the shelf. Uh, on, uh, yeah, no, he, he sent me an our, our, our new notion is to post. Have them all new and then have them all match in terms of the ones that we are previously approved on the railings. The, the larger ones on the porch would match exactly in profile, a little bit heavier, but they would, um, uh, you know, our proposal does a few things, which is everything would be historically accurate, um, we believe, of course. Um, they would all, we would not have to um, ex expend extra money to. Uh, refabricate or, or to fabricate the, the side returns and to try to restore the ones in the front um, would have been difficult. I have some images here of the condition of the existing, um, which is again sort of like a little bit of advanced state of disrepair. So, again, the notion as Phil summarized very well is that we would. Our idea is to have all new that um that match. Okay, so you have a side by side for uh, folks out there that that compare the profile um, it of is the spindle in the package on page three. Page three is no. page three. I got it. Yeah, I got it here. The side by side. Single spindle on the whole is new wood spindle for the. Upper area deck, and then of course with the spindle for the railing on the stairs. You'll note as I as I noted that the profile essentially matches, and you'll see the existing in the box on the left. Okay. Um, so that's how. And for what it's worth, the material on this is. It is on um, cedar. Uh, okay. It's in cedar. Okay. I believe that's all I have. Do you have any yeah. other questions? Like and no, what I'm are the stairs sure. made of? The risers of the stairs? The risers of the stairs? We, we did all solid hard, hard wood. Oh, uh, please hold in the okay. stairs. So I find it useful and interesting to see where we started at the beginning, which was the image of the building before we started. So sure. I know a little bit the, the uh, um, the concrete has been demolished. We've now started uh, replacing the stairs in this last step of getting approval for changing the spindle design. It's really our last phase. And, you know, if you give us to go ahead, we will order that material as soon as possible. And our guys are ready to go. Um, What's in the meantime of getting the material and the spindles is really the last step. So we have a fabricator uh, ready to go build the railing portion. And then the spindles we would buy from a from a shop that has the version that you see in our in our package. Mm -hmm. Did you do have that as a PDF document? Uh, yes, I forwarded it to Craig, and okay. it was my understanding that he would forward it to everybody. Okay. So everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And I'm happy to share this with you. I mean, I, if you 
Yeah, no, it, it was just for the folks at home. Did I, did I not forward it to you? Uh, not the PDF, just the application. Right. Okay. There was two emails. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, there's a uh, visual on all this would be separate, yeah. uh, separate doc. Yeah, no, Got it. Okay. Yeah, that would, that would be cool. Sure. If you just put that up for a minute. Yeah. This is, I think this is fantastic. I mean, it's great. You have the commitment to do a very difficult restoration. Uh, exterior stairs uncovered have short lives and uh, require a lot of maintenance and care. And uh, it's wonderful that you're committed to uh, an, an accurate uh, restoration of this uh, uh, porch and, and, and stair and building. It's really, really wonderful. I appreciate your comments. I really like to like on page two, the original version of the assembly concrete, you know, all the concrete bunker. So yeah. having that Jack Edward. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's, uh, I don't know if it's challenging, but. Uh -huh. It's a pain. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. So this is. Keep on going. There's a, there's a side by side profile just so people can see that, that a fair amount of effort went to, even though we're going to a, a source for it, uh, to tr try to get the profiles right. And then, you know, there's a really nice job here. You'll see there's some precedent noted as well. Yeah, which I'm sure. Now, yeah. still need us to remind you that. Yeah. Uh, this, this, uh, Mr. Spindle Inc. No. Where, where is Mr. Spindle? I, you know what? Do I even know where they are? It's on the web. So we yeah. were ordering them. And um, yeah, they, they, you know, our, my concern as builder guy is to obviously give the approvals, but then, you know, turn around and all it's going to take yeah. for us to get a stop and have my guys, you know, to do the work. So, well, this is a, it's a great resource. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a big name, but um, obviously yeah. they have to be stopped. So yeah. right. they're, they're a good resource. Thank, good thank resource. you. Thank you. Uh, I, I concur with the comments. Thank you for going forward and, and trying to get this really right. Yeah. Um, Again, I kind of appreciate the early image of there as one of our projects spent some years now, but we had the exterior stair that we demolished. And then um, the last time you saw anybody from my crew, Julie Bass, my partner, came to you for that crew getting walk, which work was really beautiful. We had a guy that did a really nice job. Right. Thrilled with his work. So the so. only change here for the CMA are the spindles. Right. Right. Yes. Uh, the motion finding application complete. Yeah. That would be Jeremy and you all in favor. Aye. And Paul. Uh, motion to waive the public hearing, request the city attorney to prepare a CBA. That would be Jeremy and Miranda. All in favor. Aye. 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 Done. Thank you. Okay. So Stay in touch with Craig. Uh, the city attorney will prepare a CBA. We vote on that at the next meeting. Right. And you're good to go. Okay. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is any other applications, anybody we missed and the folks with the, the sign at 750 Union come back. So Phil, what about, um, old Hudson and 402 Warren? We came prepared to re, uh, present all the comments that were made last week. We, we changed the drawings. We, <laughs> okay, yeah. let's do it. Can we do old Hudson also? Because she's missed two meetings that we've tried to get on. What is old Hudson with the other? What 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 stage is that at, Craig? That's that's uh, 449 Ward Street. That's Dean and Michael. Yes. Yeah. Uh you have tried to get on. <laughs> are you are you okay with that app? Is my question. I haven't done a full review on it. I don't know if I even got it. Dana called me on that. So was, I sent it in in December, folks. I can send it again. Um, it's just an extension they want to put under the canopy. Why don't I present it? And then uh, I don't, I, it's to code. I've, I've checked the code. It's to code. Well, you don't get to make that choice. Um, the problem is in it. December is we didn't have any emails. Our emails were down from December 2nd to, I believe, the beginning of January. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure I resend it a couple of times, but I, I can resend it right now. Um, yes. It's just she's trying to make a business decision and can't move forward until you all give her an okay. 
Walter, this is this is going north, not south. Uh, what why don't you uh, why don't you share it and start presenting it? If Craig has has questions or concerns, then then he'll have questions and concerns. But right. let's go ahead and take a look at it. Great, thank you so much. Um, let's just see if I can get it now. <laughs> Okay, so um, essentially what we're asking HPC, can everyone see my screen? No. Oh dear. Oh no. Um, hold on. Uh, sorry. Yeah, does he have permission, Jen? You might have to click on, okay. Is it good now? No, click on multiple participants. There you go. Try again, Walter. Okay. There we go. There you go. Oh boy. Okay. So I think most people are familiar with old Hudson, 449 Warren Street. The sidewalk is here. Currently, there's a canopy that is open just uh, in front of the building all the way down. We are proposing that we push out into that space to create a new addition that we're calling the atrium. And it would simply fit under the canopy. We would cut a skylight, a pyramidal skylight into the canopy. And she would open up the store from inside. So this would be an enclosed extension of the store that's out on the street. And um, we actually were hoping you all would agree that this could be an improvement and certainly will liven up the street. The other thing she wants to ask for I don't know if this is HPC's purview, but she wants to put solar panels on the roof. And I believe that sides of them will be visible from Fifth Street. And she also wants to enclose her service yard with a little fence, just a wood picket fence, or sorry, a wood stockade fence, and put a simple canopy, you know, an awning uh, in a frame out just to cover the entry and the, um, um, you know, storage area back there. And that is it. I did submit plans. Shall I shall I open those and go through those? Yes. Yeah, yes. please. And and if, if you have a, a photos in that Walter of the existing uh what's there right now. And then yes, we can I do. Hold and on. Walter, I think we're also gonna need a site plan uh for the building department and we'll need to make sure the property lines and all that other stuff. Sure. I yes. Um, I've submitted a whole package. I'll be sure to add that again. Now, wait a second. Let me just see where I can't find. Hold on. After all this time, I still get so nervous in front of your board. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. So so here we go. Um, so the old Hudson existing situation is, um, you know, just an open uh, outside sidewalk. What and and this is the property line out here, by the way. Uh, we're not projecting past those columns. Inside the line of columns, we want to build this structure here, which would be a stick frame structure, with windows that would be uh, double hung operable windows in a, in a couple of the openings. Otherwise, they will match the, um, you know, they'll match the windows upstairs and uh, all be done with the same details, storefront, et cetera. And then the other ask, of course, is back here. We'd like to fence this and, and put the canopy. And again, these are the actually extracted from the construction well, set. Walter, I don't think we're seeing the same thing you think you're yeah. showing. You're, oh, you're oh <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let me, let me try that again. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Maybe stop sharing and then yeah, reshare. You want to reshare yeah. your screen as opposed to the app. Yeah. Okay. So try it again. And uh, here we go. How's that? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. So I'm not sure what you couldn't see when I was explaining it, but um, did you see the photographs and the plans? No. Okay. So these are the existing photos. So this is the area that we're proposing putting the new addition under. And actually this post here will be more or less the center point of the addition. So it'll go from this pier here 
to there and come out, and the rest of it will pretty much appear as it will. This view would appear the same here, but you can see if we put solar panels on the roof, you'll see the side of the panels. And if we fence this yard back here, that will also be visible because there's no building on um, Fifth Street. And then, um, sorry. So that's the existing plan with this open uh, area under the canopy. And then this is our proposal to build this extension out here, uh, remove the storefront so that you would actually be passing through those um, you know, brick piers, but this will all be inside at that point. So I think that's it. Well, Walter, what kind of panels are you putting up? Are they going to be tilted, flat? They're going to match these panels here, which are, sorry, let me get the photo. Oh, That's probably a better solar, idea. Solar, solar panels. Oh, I'm so sorry. They're, oh, sorry. The solar panels are those ones that go up on a frame at an angle. So um, I have it in a drawing. I had it in a drawing. Okay, I didn't put that drawing in, but here they are. They're back from the roof a little bit, Victoria, but you know, they'll stick up about two and a half, three feet at the, at the back side, you know, cause they're inclined to the south mm -hmm. to face the sun. Greg, do you have a question? Looks like you were gonna say something. Yeah, Walter, I got a few questions. The, well, since you're on the solar panels right there, in this the middle, to me, has there been an engineer report of the structural stability of the world? No, sir, oh. there's not. Okay, so they can't do anything with that until we look at that because then panels have to have an engineer approval of the roof load. Okay. You, you get a live load up there, we're adding weight to that roof. So that's all gonna be engineered approved first. I understand. All right, so then go to your front north elevation, if you would. The existing picture, right? I'm assuming. That one. Now, the, the actual physical picture. Oh, the photograph, sorry. I'm sorry. That there, the bottom where it says the existing north elevation? Yeah. Are you proposing to build out farther onto the sidewalk? Behind the columns. So on their property under the canopy. So all you're looking to do really is enclose that. Yes. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. To be clear, so there's no change in the footprint. And not oh, in the building and canopy footprint, this would be an intrusion into the space under the canopy. I see. And so the in the photograph on the bottom that we're looking at right now, <clears throat> there's a, a door down the side that's accessed from the sidewalk that goes to a, um, a door, a that, passage that remains uh, that, unobstructed. Yes. Um, sorry, let me just see if I can do this. Can you see my 3D drawing or do I have to go out and start sharing again? I think you have to go to share again. Okay. Great. So, whoops, don't do that. Um, <laughs> Walter, you know. Walter, Walter, this is Paul, um, and that's a, a skylight uh, you want to. Uh, add, is that what we see here as well? Exactly, exactly. We want to put a pyramid skylight in the center of the room coming out of the top of the roof. And um, Chip, to your point, here's that door here. So we're still leaving access and, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a clear access. We might cover it eventually with a little canopy or something. For now, I think we just want to do what I show. And, and so there would be potentially... Um, uh, a path of travel from that stair, which I guess is the second second floor egress. Yeah, yeah that would actually give them, uh, you know, a little uh, courtyard area way in front. Now it's just open and they have planters sort of blocking it off. So it, it might actually be a little bit more effective for them. What would, be in the, what would be the requirement for the fire rating for that? Do those windows comply with the fire rating for what that wall would have to be for the path of travel? We will make sure they do that. So how do we feel about, I mean, if this changes, the, the building is very symmetrical, let's just say that, and this kind of changes the feel of the building and the material right for me. 
how do we feel as a commission about that? I don't. I have less of an issue with the panels on the back and more of the question of the asymmetry we're introducing on the front. End. This is a new building, correct? I mean, new. It's it's it's, oh, so this it's never. It's nineteen nineties, I think. Oh, nineteen ninety right. building of the nineteen ninety. No, the, 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 the block part behind you see the part that has the panels at the rear that's the original there was a one-story building there and they put the second floor and the porch on i believe in the 1990s got it now that that building the city of old for that building was issued in 2000 i want to say 14. Mm -hmm. That second whole second level is all new construction. It was reconstructed. It used to be a one <clears throat> one story laundry mat. Mm -hmm. And back in the late 80s, that whole section of that corner burned. Mm -hmm. And Charlie Vianney was the engineer and architect at the time when they rebuilt it. So this was one of the new construction, but for that whole park. Um everything you see there is in compliance of the existing codes. The windows, obviously, Chip has a good point. They have to be fire rated because you have a path of egress that's within five feet. Um, but the other question is, Walter, that I'm looking at is them enclosures. What you're showing right there, it's only going to be that section that's going to be enclosed? Yes. This okay. is an addition to the interior space of the building. The rest is going to be left, as I show it, as an outdoor cafe terrace. Okay, so it's not compromising your ADA accessibility either. Not at all. It's totally accessible, the whole thing. And and so that uh, basically the, uh, <clears throat> the the entire ground floor is going to be one occupancy now. And Correct. this is a new room. And th this new room that you're building underneath the canopy, that new room does not have an egress door to the sidewalk or the um patio area correct it's that that is correct but it's well within the you know egress distance to the door no okay well the egress is not our if not certainly not the commission's issue but just to understand that that from this oh yeah room, that's that's completely inside the store there will be no access to the sidewalk to the street or to mm -hmm. uh from outside of this room so it's kind of a it's a it's a self-contained room um yeah it's an atrium right i'm i'm not troubled by the any loss of symmetry here i mean i think that the the building is evolving the needs of the building are evolving it started out with a large porch if you will that uh has in fact seen some really useful uh activity it's great for the street um i i i I think it would be unfortunate if the entire uh, canopy were enclosed in this fashion, just because I like the activity of the street of the sidewalk, you know, flowing into that um, into that area. Um, so I I think it's good. I, I I I think this is an improvement to the streetscape. Yeah, that's good. I I think that that uh, that enclosed space is actually can be nicer to look at than just tables and chairs all the way across. Is that projected the guy like is that centered on the windows or the block the, 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 the skylight? The skylight would be uh centered on the windows on the atrium and uh, I didn't have time, but it would actually give a very nice light effect. Uh, you know, it'll shine light. So it's dark under that canopy now, and that room will be glowing. I think it'll be quite lovely. Walter, well, do you have any specs on how high that will rise up, things like that? Yeah, it's uh, it's on, a, uh, I believe, an 18-inch curb, and I was thinking it would be a three-foot pyramidal Skylight, I was thinking of one of those kind of frameless acrylic ones just because it would be most invisible. But if you wanted more of an old timey, you know, like you'd see on an old building with a frame, we, we could do that too. So you're thinking the whole thing from the canopy to the top would be about three feet or four and so, a half? So, so this is about 18 inches here you know, just that curb. So if there was snow or something on the roof, it wouldn't, you know, overwhelm the skylight and the skylight would be three feet. So the whole thing would be about four and a half feet up 
off the roof, which, you know, when you get down to street level, you know, you'll see the top of the pyramid only, you know, at some distance it'll be visible, some, some places it won't. I personally think it'll be a nice little addition to the street, but everybody's got a different sense of shape. So, um, it, okay. you know, it can be anything um, that the commission thinks is appropriate. I was thinking a clear acrylic skylight would just make it disappear. You know, you'd see a little reflection and that's it. Walter, can you turn that more facing straight on? There you go. Okay. So if, if I understand the previous discussion, solar panels are off the table for consideration from, from our point of view right now until there's an engineering report. We'll come back for that, yes. Okay. I, uh, I have a question about, yeah, the, going, about the fence yeah. in the back. Does, yeah. does the new fence in the back change the uh, pattern of use for the dumpsters? Where are the dumpsters? That's a good question. The dumpsters are going to reside right inside here, I think. Wait, sorry, sorry. The dumpsters are out in the alley now. And I'm sorry, the dumpsters, I think we're going to leave in the alley because of the access issue. Um, we can talk about that if you want. Everybody else has got their dumpsters up and down the alley. So we were just going to have ours there too. This is, um, she goes through, uh, Old Hudson goes through just so many boxes, you can't even believe it. And they need a fenced yard. If you go there now, and look behind the store, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's like a mountain of stuff. And we just thought it would be better to enclose it. I can't really put the dumpster up there because of the access issue, right? So I think the dumpster unfortunately has to stay adjacent to the building in the alley for now. It, so is the dump, dumpster in the alley right away? No, uh, we have property that, extends, I believe, out to here, and there are little dumpsters right along here. So the dumpsters are not in the alley right away? No, they're on they the alley on the property. They're on the alley side. They're yes. on the alley side, but they're on the on the property, within the property, and they're not... I, the question is about keeping dumpsters out of the alley, uh, out of the alleyway. I mean, it's bad enough to have dumpsters right up against the alley, but to have them in the alleyway, the alley right of way, um, well, you know, I, is, is a problem. But no, I, I agree with that. And, you know, that's a huge issue that we should have a serious group discussion about as a city, because this problem is universal and also involves rats, rodents, all kinds of bad stuff. So... Uh, not to mention fire, not to mention fire safety for and, and unattractiveness. You know, yeah. Fire so, to so navigate the, the alley. So when you suggest something to the um, uh, carting companies, usually they say we wouldn't do that. So I think this is a municipal question that the city, not to digress, but why don't we have a conversation about this? Maybe there are some laws that you guys could pass that could make this better for everybody. Well, this board wouldn't be. I'm sorry, I'm speaking of the city. Sorry, I'm speaking to Craig, I guess. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to be sure that as we approve the fence, that we're not compounding the issue of the dumpsters in the alley right away. No, that is to enclose the unenclosed box storage area that she has now, where they also come to, to pick up, you know, and, and that we're arranging for. I would love to find a housing for the dumpster solution, but you know, we don't have the room for it out there. What the, in this drawing that you're showing us now, the 3D drawing, the the gr darker gray plate, if you will, that the it looks like it's the property line of the of the property. It is 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 that is the building have property line to its east? Um so that's um, an adjacent property under the same ownership. Okay, it goes all the way to the corner. It does. Okay, so that line that you that you have in this three D is not a real uh, property that's, line. That's my, um, you know, I generated this from an AutoCAD drawing, and that was the paper size, so it became a, yeah. an artifact in the drawing. 
the 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 ice cream booth that faces Warren Street up right there, here. Right here. Does that, does that remain in this? It does. There, we're not proposing any changes to the adjacent property. Just um, you know, just the service yard that you see and the area under the canopy. Was the ice cream booth approved by the commission? <laughs> By the building, was it a building permit issued for that? <clears throat> Didn't need one. It was always supposed to be a temporary for seasonal purposes, uh -huh. and it's not supposed to be permanent. If that's permanent, then they're not going to use it. Look at the CNA. Uh -huh. <clears throat> no foundation. I think it's um, a you know gypsy structure. We can just take it away. It's an architectural term. It's yeah. a character. Yeah. It's cute. We need to work on that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's permitted. Sorry, I used a bad term. I, I, I've i learned no. to, I've renamed the moth. I keep using that term and I apologize. I'm also struggling with master bedroom, but I'm going to do better. Okay, so right now you're asking for approval of the enclosure with the pyramid and the fence. In the skylight. Yes. Yeah. I think it looks great. Yeah. yeah, I do too. I think it's an improvement to the street. It's mm -hmm. safe, actually. It's been a it is. It is going to be nice. Uh, the, there, there was something funny about that nice. whole space being uh, tables and chairs. This is <clears throat> this is important. And, and Mr. Chairman, on, on the avenue, the, and I apologize for the logistical issues that we've had. Uh, there's nothing here that I see that would be a code enforcement issue as far as building code, as far as what you would have to review. Understood. And and Walter is is said that it, he'll get back to you, or you guys will work together on uh, solar on yeah. solar panel and the weight yeah. issue, fire uh, and the fire rating, the windows near the or adjacent to the egress on the side. And plants that had the window specs or wood and all that information in it. Uh, I don't know, Walter. Do you have specs? On the, the uh, on the yeah on the drawings it says windows to match existing and I can get all that information. There's a you know pretty nice uh, industrial commercial grade um, clad window on there now that we're going to just go with. So I'll get that information. And the and the trim and the woodwork that you're proposing the panels of the of the uh, atrium room, the exterior panels of the atrium room, you can provide, uh, you'll provide detailed uh, drawings and specifications for that. Yes, <laughs> but, but again, That's we're just- Final package. Yes, we'll just match the paneling that's there, but I'll give you all of that. If, okay. if, assuming we go forward, uh, that would be great. If you could get the window specs to us, uh, it's, it's a, a slow learning curve, but uh, at least once in a while, I notice that when we are not absolutely specific on the window specs, we get surprised by what goes up. And and storefront, storefront yeah. woodwork. Uh, yeah, sure. No, matters. no, I've I've noticed that, and I appreciate that. I think if it's all right, we'll go ahead and finish up the construction drawings, which would have all that information, and then submit those to you if that's okay. It, it it's more than okay. Right. Uh, it, it it's important. You you know the building I'm referring to with their surprising metal windows. Um, yeah, that was um, that was a surprise to everybody except the people who put them in. I think. I are those that, remaining? Which they we we have not. I went through the recording of the meeting, uh, the drawings, uh, and any other uh, forensic evidence we could find to indicate what we'd specified on the left side of that building. On the right side, there was a high degree of specificity about the restoration of the door. Right. Uh, and and what, the roof. And the roof. Everything, everything was specified very, very well on, I, I forget the address, it's below Ackerman's, mm -hmm. uh, next to the building, the Craig Tuman building. I don't remember the address, I, I remember Craig. Um, we did not spec. Well, uh, my recollection is that and, the, and the, the application says it, metal. Can, can that be a different conversation? Yes, yes, yes let's yeah. finish this. That's more of an enforcement issue. Understood. Yeah. Understood. <clears throat> Thanks, Greg. Okay. 
if, the, if there are no other questions or issues, a uh, motion to find the application complete. Q and Miranda. Well, uh, now wait a minute. We're, is this a concept approval or is this a final approval? It is final, contingent on what we see in terms of the specifications that we requested on the windows and trim. And we can add anything else to that as contingency that you know. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we have to approve that before we approve the, the C as we can do it concurrently with approving the C of A, but the specifications have to be available to us at the next meeting when we look at the C of A. Okay. That's fair. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so with those contingencies in mind, a motion to find the application complete, Miranda and you, all in favor, a uh, motion to ask the city attorney to prepare a C of A. Uh, with the contingencies that uh, everything that we requested be spec'd out, get spec'd out, uh, which is the specifics of the window and trim and materials, et cetera. And, and, and the fence. And the fence. And the storefront. Yeah. And the storefront. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Have to vote again on yeah. approval. We just no, we 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 well, ca we capture all in favor. We 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 oh, capture I, all I, that in the specification. All in favor. Uh, I, I uh, motion to request the city attorney to prepare a CFA with those contingencies, contingent on the applicant delivering the information we need. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. And Chip. Why not? Why not? All in Aye. favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. It's interesting. Thank you so much. Okay. Have we missed, skip, or otherwise not covered any applicants who are, who are waiting in the wings? Walter has another thing. Okay. Go for it. Oh, you're the best. I'll go really fast. Um, <laughs> thank you. Not that fast. Hold on. Uh, so, so this is a follow-up uh, in response to what was addressed in the in the public hearing. Yes, and now I just have to figure out how to share screen again. Okay. Hold on. Great. Okay, so because you all are so nice and responsive to me, I want to be nice and responsive to you and to everybody who's contributed to this discussion. So we hope today we're going to put the 402 discussion to bed because we've done everything we were asked to do, and we'll let you determine whether we've done it successfully or not. So I'll just zoom through very quickly. Um, this is the site plan now. I think we discussed the fact that we are uh, going to leave this as a two-story existing building with no modifications other than the ones we discussed. Um, we're going to keep this as a... Uh, townhouse appearing building with an elevator bulkhead. And then, uh, you know, we have the, what I call the one and a half story restaurant building, three story addition behind it. I think you all remember the discussion was basically to make all of that uh, sort of back of the house stuff, a kind of nice utilitarian metal. And the rest we're gonna go with the historic materials. So um, starting at the back, there is the new hotel annex. There is a view from the alley. This is the elevator uh, bulkhead here. This is the new building that we're adding. And it was suggested and we decided they were right that we drop this structure. We were able to do it quite a bit. So you'll see in the other elevations, now we have more of a kind of gradual, hopefully more successful composition on the street. And that's what that looks like. Um, just to remind you, we took it off because it was distracting, but this in the background would be the corrugated metal, which you would not see from the street probably, and we'll get to the perspectives in a second. This is the fully restored original building with the brackets now not put back on. This is our proposed intermediate building, uh, very simplified, simplified openings, uh, et cetera. And then going around the corner, on the main street on Warren, we've just 
repeated these bays as we discussed and and chip and others suggested that we really study this and we have we looked at the photographs for hours and we're very comfortable proposing this rhythm with a break here a new matching arcade but we would change the color of the wood windows and doors and we would do and i'm sorry i'm, I'm trying to say with a straight face but it was such a great idea we're going to propose slurry washing because after that presentation last week we thought wow that would really be a cool thing to do so we'd like to use a nice brick and slurry wash it on this edition so it's different but thematically the same and i forgot to mention that on this facade as well so this portion and the portion here would be slurry washed all of the historic brick would remain and be restored and then um, we have the 3D drawings to back this up. Um, unfortunately, again, I apologize. These are very flat. As I think you know, these openings, the, the glass would be pushed back. So you get much more of depth. But this is just to show you the simplicity, the kind of way that we've tried to listen to what was said last time and, and bring the whole composition and, you know, this is not how I roll usually, so I'm on a learning experience here myself, but I understand why this is being done this way and why everybody wants this, and I'm, I'm with it. So there it is. I hope you like it. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Walter. Uh, one of the things we'd be interested in is the detailing of the storefront, uh, particularly that on the historic building on the corner. Um, uh, you were going to do some exploratory uh, investigations into that building to see exactly how that stone had been used as the storefront. Um, and so we'd be interested in that understanding of how that was actually historically built. So um, what I have found so far is limited. Um, this portion actually remains, and I know you've seen it, it's actually three pieces. And this part was all completely removed on either side and replaced. Uh, they put a steel beam over mm -hmm. and then had plate glass storefront below. And then after that, uh, plate gl glass was removed various people came and put brick and in infill and everything. So I, you know, I think this is a kind of fascinating example where I think we're gonna have to do some serious demolition and come up with a program That's to right. figure out exactly how we're gonna do it. Now, um, Ronald and Matt had suggested that we could do a stone veneer. And that is certainly a possibility that we would build a um, probably a masonry structure and put a veneer on it, I think it would be obviously much more successful to try and do it with monolithic stone. That survives, we think. Yeah. yeah. So in the, the picture was there. Yeah, yeah. So so the intention is to make that happen. How we're going to do that at this point, while we're still trying to get a design pulled together, it's very hard to say. I I would tend to want to use the larger, more monolithic stone if that is possible, but I would certainly ask this commission to give us a little latitude and let us come back to you if you would approve this with conditions when we've had a chance to do a structural analysis and come back with you know what would be a serious answer to this question because I don't want to say we're just going to do a stone veneer facade. I don't think that I think that would be disappointing. And it wouldn't get you the depth. Can so, you zoom, can you zoom into your storefront in this yeah. image for yeah. us, Walter? Sorry. While you're doing that, I mean, you do understand the board approved the concept earlier during this meeting and asked that you return with the more complete plans and all your detailed specifications. So I I appreciate that, and I I understand that. Um, what I'm trying to get at is an approval at at this level that my fellow architects could actually go forward. If, if, if we've gotten all the approvals we're gonna get until we come back with construction drawings, then I guess we're gonna go to Vegas with that and hope that we come back with something you like. Um, I was hoping to 
get this get a CBA with conditions, oh. maybe more details. But if if you want to do it the other way, I'm fine. I'm I'm only trying to convey our design intentions at this point and to show you that we're attempting to accede to your wishes. So he's brought back the concept of this middle section that we're looking at right now with the wash on the brick and the lowering of the cornice, which we asked about. Uh, we see also the cornice on the right-hand side of the historic building is now going back to white, not brick going up into it. And uh, I, th that's, that's definitely uh, improvement. These were, and, and slightly stepping back, I think you slightly step back the rest, what you're calling the restaurant building on one street, that's also, is that also slightly stepped back from the, the main No, corner? that's that's actually, um, sorry, that's in plain. The infill building? On, on, the, on the Warren Street side. This these, building, two line, these two are in plain, but what we've done is we've introduced a, a negative joint between them. So uh, that there's going to be a nice dark line that says stop historic, begin new edition. Yeah. Did um did you what you roof gutters and downspouts? So there's going to be can those be integral to the building or are they going to be attached on the surface? I would rather uh, take them inside, and that's what we're hoping to do. If we do have to attach them, we'll certainly add those to the drawings and bring them back to you. I mean, I don't mind if we do copper. I don't mind them, but I th I think it, uh, you know, we still would have to take them into drains in the street, so it'd probably be better to take them inside. Walter, for clarification, the the entry doors are flush with the sidewalk as my understanding like the door that's there now that remains are the windows slightly recessed in so, this concept um, so in the in these uh, the plans that accompany these everything is set back in this facade because the hist that's what i was blathering on about before you look at the historic photograph and i think chip called it a colonnade it is like a colonnade. It looks coming down the street. So we would, and that's why I was apologizing about the rendering. These would be pushed back so that you'd get at least a foot and hopefully more of stone and then the facade. You know, that would, that would be the way to do it. And then when you go around the corner, it's flush. You know, so when we go around, whoops, sorry. Oh no, where am I now? Yeah, so this this is the end of that colonnade. And just like on Third and Warren, we would expose that last pier, but it would be flush with the brick. And then this opening, you know, the opening would be the regular opening and the door would just be set back the depth of the brick. So it would just be set back to the back of the brick in that case, as, as would all of these. So all of these would be like if you know how 501 Union is now with the windows set in, so they, they push up against the back of the brick, that's how we do this. So do we want to break this down into pieces and talk about it? So how do we feel about the wash? I, I really like the wash idea of articulating yeah. the new and the old, but still keeping a kind of common language. I do too, John. So I, I, think, I, I think that's a great addition. I think also that I like the treatment, I like the, Kind of echoing of the treatment of the main entrance on the other side. And I think that doors color kind of addresses the issue, but I don't know if it fully addresses the issue. It feels, uh, I think it helps articulate it. It makes it feel separate, but I'm not. It, it still seems a little bit too much like a continuation yes. of the historic design uh, on the right-hand side, uh, rather than um, something that's, significantly different from the uh, I'm, I appreciate Walter your concept of the open joint or the cold joint between those um, those two uh, buildings but um, I'd, I, I think it would be it'd be it'd be nice to see a, a little bit more variation in the storefront since on the on the historic building, you're, it's really a restoration, an attempt at restoration, 
um, on the um, <clears throat> on the historic building, whereas on the new building, it, it's it, it's it's more of a statement of its newness rather than uh, as a restoration. And so, does that also? Uh obtained to the art, the colonnade would you not want the colonnade to continue or how do you feel about that well i don't know what you're talking about the colonnade continuing what, is, what so you in other words um i think you're talking about this part of the building here yeah right? yes and so we had just continued this colonnade right <coughs> is that part of the problem is it is yes it the whole yes thing? that's yes exactly that's that's the point i'm trying to make walter that continuing that colonnade over into the new one and a half story high building uh, confuses the restoration of the historic building from the new building, which is to be, I, I think the opportunity to make that frankly more different from the historic building is a, an opportunity in the storefront. Plus you really want to make that appear to be a different storefront because that's your that's your main entrance. Well, wait, are they? How is it being used inside? Is it one big space? See, it's one business. You see, that's. I mean, I understand what Chip is saying, and I'm not going to argue. But to me, this works because it's that bar entrance is the entrance to the restaurant, and it's all unified. I mean, you know, at this point, uh, it's easy for us to do whatever you like. We can change it however you like. I had been following a logic that was pushing me more and more towards making this a unified composition. I always try and make things different. And so if I've made them too similar, we can we can dial it back. But I just, I really want to say this at some point, uh, and I've done a lot of these structures where, you know, a bunch of people want variety and they come up with all these things. At some point, we're going to be making it different for the point of making it different. And this is the thing I want to say, and I want the HPC to think about this. If this was 100 years ago, they wouldn't make me make it different. They would make it exactly the same, right? Because you're putting an addition onto a building and it's the same purpose. So I think this is an interesting philosophical question. I'm going to throw my gauntlet down and say, I think this is the right solution for the direction that we have been told to take. So I would like you all to consider this and possibly approve it as drawn. Well, the gauntlet always hurts somebody. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm, we the, gonna have a gauntlet? The, um... Well, that was a little dramatic. You know what I'm saying? I think we should have it out because I've been trying to follow a logic that <laughs> I've accepted and now I think I'm being told, well, you're too logical, make it a little messy. And I don't know if I can do that now. I, it's too much of a change. There's, too there's, much a, there's a further argument that that small building was never um, quote unquote significant. Uh, and well, if the original building that was there were there now, yes, we would find it to be quite significant. Yes. But it ain't. <laughs> it's new construction. It's, it's new construction. It's basically new construction. And yeah. from the from the point of view of, of how this is going to be used, how people will understand uh, what they're looking at, where they're supposed to go into, what they're going into, and so on. Yeah. There's there's there, there's a uh, utility logic at a minimum uh to to uh well, I mean, I, I I understand what you're saying about about differentiation, and if there were there were some unique value uh, to that little structure, uh, it would it would would make. I don't feel I don't really think this is significantly hurting uh, the restoration. I think the restoration remains quite significant. People will 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 get it when they look at it. The, the little building, it's not going to be that important. And it might as well then be subservient. I, I do understand the other logic that any new construction associated with a significant building should be differentiated, but I, I think this could actually work well. I don't think it's quote unquote inappropriate. I, I, I think the significance 
The significant thing that they have accomplished is really the restoration mm -hmm. of the corner building. Yes. The two townhouses on the side. And they are a different period than most of Warren Street. So it will really stand out as being a restoration of a historic period of architecture that is that is well represented in town, but not in good shape mostly. Yes. So I think that that's a very significant accomplishment. I too, usually I'm on the that side of wanting something to look really new and not to have it be copying something that's old. And I wonder okay. if <laughs> I was trying to say if this were washed, would you would it would it address washed a different color, for example? Or I'm saying I think the fact that it's not washed here, would we get what we want out of it? Maybe we the might. fact that we haven't seen the wash that we're we're yeah. reading this more as unified, whereas yeah. if you saw this as white, yeah. Or and, and, and the only point soft. the only point that I'm making is that I agree with you that the wash over the second floor brick on this addition is a successful addition, mm -hmm. a, a successful treatment to help differentiate between the two buildings. I'm only proposing that something similar to the wash, not actually literally a wash, over that stone be made to further that distinction between the historic building and the new building. Yeah, that's almost as if the brick continued. And that well, I'm not, I'm not necessarily proposing that, I'm just, you know, the concept is for the second floor brick to be washed, to differentiate it between the historic building. Right. That's a good and valuable thing to do. I think that that's a very attractive. I'm, I'm only suggesting that a similar sort of thought be given to the storefront so that it also is slightly different than the storefront of the historic building so that it can just as subtly be determined to be slightly different mm -hmm. than the storefront and not be an extension and extrusion of that historic right. store. And that's actually where I was going because right. maybe we're not talking about something so drastic as not continuing the colonnade, but maybe if the windows were different on the ground floor, just as it would be any other part of Warren Street is a separate yeah. building and it has its own Yeah, windows. maybe maybe, maybe the colonnade like maybe that. the colonnade uh header across rises slightly just again so that it's not an extruded copying of the historic building so so this is i like this um i was going to say before I, yeah, I heard that the idea that came to me was you know when you did a stone addition to a historic building they rarely got the quarry to produce the same stone so we would use a stone that matches the existing historic stone on the uh, historic building and we could go to either a darker or a lighter stone or a rough textured stone like a, a you know flame finished or something yeah, that that's might an ex excellent excellent thought i think that's i think that's great walter so we're on the same page we can make it look similar but those in the know know that it's a historic uh, building with an addition because we've changed the textures. Yeah. Yes. Um, can you zoom in? Can you zoom in any further on that in this drawing into the storefront to talk a little bit about the windows and the panels and the woodwork and what your approach will be in detailing that. Um, yes. Sorry, bear your, with me. Thoughts. Sorry. Whoops. This is my worst moment. Just when things are going well, I can't zoom in. <laughs> See, right. like it's going the wrong way. See what's happening? Going the wrong way. Victoria, can you help me? No kidding. Uh, okay, so. You know, basically, I, I think what you're asking is, how do these get treated? And I'm thinking these are framed wood inserts, you know, that we would have a, a, a wood body that would have, I didn't put panels in this because of the sidewalk, and I'm not sure what the slope is doing. But, you know, we'd create a unified wood base and then add wood windows on top of that base. And that would be recessed behind the stone uh, yes. work that you're talking about. My dream would be to get that at least a foot back. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
and all of the openings on on Warren. So, you know, somebody had said, well, would you put, put the doors out? I, I don't think so. I think you'd want to see those shadows going all the way down the street. Right. I, I don't recall the relationship of the storefront wood to the stone at the corner of Third and Warren Street. Um, that was a, a, a model that you had suggested because that building shares the vintage shares a vintage with this building on the corner of Fourth. Yes, and there they have this kind of wonderful thing where I think the stone actually has a groove that takes a wood member that is the ground for the uh, doors to fit into, and then they're I'm I'm assuming they got iron pegs or something to hold it in, but. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a 19th century system basically. Yeah. They, they so have this. those are the kinds of details that the commission is going to be interested in seeing in measured, detailed uh, construction drawings. Mm -hmm. Me too. And I'll just mention that one of the tricks that we've learned since being in Hudson is, however thick we make that facade, if we push the storefront up against the back of it, uh, it will read like a giant piece of stone. So. So we'll make sure it's detailed as monolithically as possible is what I'm trying to say. So, right, so come back with those details, please. <laughs> Walter, uh, yeah. uh, the, the, what, what Victoria had, had prefaced our discussion with uh, uh, is, is the, the, the notion of the specificity of the construction details uh, to allow a complete application and what you had referred to uh is uh a legitimate concern about not uh spinning wheels or, or consuming architectural time uh i think uh we've got the stronger argument we're, we're not wasting your time or trying to waste your time or the architectural time on this uh it would be so helpful uh, on these large projects, and it, and it may not be always possible to not uh, do it just in slices because uh, the, the the system doesn't adapt that well to it. If if you would agree to come back again with the full detail, uh, I think we can get this done. No no one's trying to push back on 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 the concept. We're in agreement on uh, your idea and now a shared idea for differentiating the smaller building with uh, with texture and finish on the stone. We're in agreement on using the wash uh, on the second story. We're in agreement on the, the reset. We're in agreement. I mean, the, we, we're not far off, but we have to have a complete application. And I don't see why we can't, and I don't see why it interferes with with your work going forward. I, I agree. I think um, I appreciate that and, and don't mean to come off as paranoid. We just have a schedule that, you know, is very aggressive, uh, was aggressive. Now it's not so aggressive. And, um, you know, we, we don't want to move forward and then find that we've gone for a month and then have to go backwards. So I think it's, we're it's okay. Not, that's not happening. We've moved yeah. forward in every meeting on, on this project, and it's a big and important project and a great one. I agree. Um, and, and, I'm sorry. So why, why, why not put in the time a bit getting us all the, the, the stuff to completion uh, and I, I don't see anything interfering with uh, with uh, coming through the next meeting with that and and uh, continuing to move forward because we are moving forward. It's been a great collaboration. Wonderful. Okay, mm -hmm. I agree. And and I I don't mean to come off as paranoid. I apologize. I'm just trying to help other people get their work done. And I appreciate that this is a large complex thing, and I think it's going well. So yeah, let's keep going. I had a very good friend many years ago who used to say you have to be crazy not to be paranoid. And it is an interesting point. Um, really that's, that's my thought. I mean, <laughs> thank you for sharing. Yeah. Right. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> We're not sure who your friend was. <laughs> this is.
this is good stuff. We're going in the right direction. We're in concurrence on pretty much everything. You've been very collaborative on, on the stuff we're asking for. Why not just come back in, in, in two weeks and let's try to get it done. Done. Deal. We'll come back with section details and storefront and everything else that we can think of that you might like to look at. The that lighting, would be, that'd be great. the yeah. stone choices, the, the material, the drawers, the materials. materials. Sure. That that would be terrific. The type of slurry wash you're proposing. The restoration of the cornice material details. Uh, the the stoop and metalwork details. Uh, to the um, two townhouses on Fourth Street, etc. Okay, let's go for the gold, Walter. All right, we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. We do have a hand raise. The hand raise. Uh, who, who, who's got their hand up? I can't see that far. Uh, I think it's Ronald. Ronald. Okay. Matt, Matt would like to say something. Uh, I, I really have to congratulate the, the outcome that I'm seeing here. And, and I think it's going to be a wonderful addition to the cityscape of Hudson. And I think that the idea of just changing the color of the materials on the adjacent building would would do enough separation, and I I really think that it's it's great, and I like seeing the commission, the public, and the applicant all working together, and and I think there's been a wonderful outcome, and I really appreciate that. This has come out the way it has, and and thanks very much. Thank you. You've been a big part of it, guys. Thank you very much. So you're, you're you are always helpful, and it, it's uh, a, a pleasure to get your feedback on this. Okay. Thanks again. <laughs> is there is there more on the agenda, ladies and gents, other than uh, uh, John and Jeremy going to report on the, the process? That's the last thing. That's where we are. Did, and so the uh, sign never showed up, right? No. Okay. No. We shut down the Zoom. I don't think uh, it's up to you, uh, Victoria. We, we're looking for a recommendation from, uh, from John and uh, Jeremy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Miranda had a, a family thing happen the same day that we were interviewing uh, uh, Kim, so she should, could, should we go into the executive session? I'm, I'm asking you. So yes, you should go into executive session. The Zoom should be, I suppose, uh, muted and the video turned off for the time being because you have to come out, out of executive session to end meeting. I understand. Uh, do I need a motion? Paul with us. Who's on the Zoom? Okay, why don't we call can Paul? Can you call someone? It might be easier. Kim's on there. Yeah, I think we should. I, I, it's too risky. <laughs> uh, I think we're just going to have to do it with the people in the room uh, if we're going to keep or, this. Or you can, you can uh, get Paul. Can to call, call. Paul can call me and I can. Okay, fair enough. Paul, can you call? He's off. Okay. Oh, okay. He's off. Okay. So, a uh, motion to go into executive session to discuss. Uh, Jeremy and Miranda in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Do I do I mute?
The complication is that we serve at the pleasure of the mayor. He's not had an opportunity. We come out of executive session. All in favor, uh, we're out of the executive session. We can rejoin the public. Mm -hmm. The owl is off her Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd like uh, to make a motion. No, we already made the motion. You just have to make a statement. So, in executive session, in executive session, the board we, made a recommendation. The board made a recommendation uh, to. Uh, Ask the chair to send uh, a candidate for the position of architect on the board uh, to Mayor Johnson. Mm -hmm. So we can motion to adjourn. Uh, we have to. We have a, a raised hand. Okay. Can't read that. Uh, Phil. Who's up? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Every, We're good. Everyone's good. We're all good. Yeah. May I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second.